And while kids across the country are preparing to go back to class, one of the nation's coronavirus hotspots has troubling new numbers for school-aged children. Eyewitness News reporter Alexander Leslie explains what recent case and hospitaliza hospitalization data is showing in Florida. In an eight-day period in mid-July, data shows that cases among Florida children rose 34 percent, while hospitalizations rose 23 percent. And sadly, the death toll increased by one. On July 16th, Florida had a total of more than 23,000 kids under the age of 17 test positive for COVID-19. But by July 24th, there were more than 31,000 cases. And the death toll in children went from four to five when nine-year-old Kamora Lynham died last Saturday. Her parents said she had no underlying health conditions and stayed home all summer. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is still pushing for kids to go back to school in August. He has not mandated masks there. He and the president have failed every child and teacher and educator in Florida and put them at risk because of their reckless, reckless um, efforts to reopen schools. Four months into the pandemic, the president had his strongest push for wearing masks yet, calling them patriotic in a tweet. In Rhode Island, data among children is a different story. This in part due to factors like the state's size or child population. Rhode Island has had a statewide mask mandate since April. As of Monday, Rhode Island children under 19 accounted for just over 1,400 cases since the start of the pandemic. Out of the state's total, that's 0.8%. Data shows 43 under the age of 19 have been hospitalized, meaning just 0.2% of the total hospitalizations in the state. There's been one pediatric death in Rhode Island. August 31st is the day state leaders hope to have most all Rhode Island kids back in the classroom, but a decision on the format won't happen until mid-August. I'm Alexandra Leslie, Eyewitness News.